Happy marriage is a long conversation which always seems too short. We are not the same person this last year's last, nor those we love. It is happy if chance of us changing continue to be a love changing person. The first duty of love is to listen. You don't marry someone you can live with, you marry someone whom you cannot live without. Love is an act of endless forgiveness, a tender look at what becomes a habit. The most brilliant achievement by my ability is to be able to persuade my wife to marry me. It was the most brilliant achievement of all my abilities. But to be married to a man who makes you laugh every day, now that's a real treat. Marriage is not a ritual or an end. It's a long, intricate, intimate dance together and nothing matters more than her own sense of balance and your own choice of a partner. Love does not consist of gazing at each other, but it's looking out together with the same direction. Love is composed of a single soul inhibiting two bodies. Love, two minds with a single thought. In the story of Adam and Eve in the second chapter of Genesis adds some vital insights to the concept of marriage. This chapter tells how the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life so that he became a living soul. And then the Lord God put him in the beautiful garden of Eden. Something, however, was lacking. Man was not complete in the God garden. And then the Lord God said, It's not good that man should be alone. I will make a help me for him. In Genesis 2.18 This early Bible account points to a woman's uh, important role instead of a help me to her husbands. Wives have rendered valuable to their husbands in every period of human activity and every period of the world's history from the time of Eve to the present. But one woman was not created solely to be man's subordinate helper. After the Lord God had decided to make woman, He caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. God took one of Adam's ribs. One of his ribs. Not a part of his head or foot. Not to rule over her or trample upon her but from near his heart. A co-equal. Not inferior or superior, but a sharer of life. In a marriage ceremony with God Himself as the officiate minister, the Lord God brought him, her to the man. United with woman, man was now complete and whole. No longer were they two people, but one. Adam expressed the closeness of their union when he declared this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, but she shall be called woman. And Jesus underscored the uniqueness of this first marriage and its contending importance when he made this penetrating and comprehensive statement. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, so that the twain shall be one flesh, so that there are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. God's pattern is clear. One man for one woman, till death do them part. Believing that this couple understands that kind of lifetime of love and commitment is taught in God's Word, it's my privilege to ask, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Mother and I. Thank you.
Zach, do you accept Kelsey as an equal to you as a person? Do you find in her the qualities you respect, admire, and share that you believe that you can live with for a lifetime? Do you intend to give freely to her and receive freely from her? And do you now receive Kelsey to be your wife? And do you promise to develop this relationship during this marriage? I do. Kelsey, do you accept Zach as an equal to you as a person? Do you find in him the qualities that you respect, admire, and share that you believe that you can live with for a lifetime? Do you intend to give freely to him and receive freely from him? And do you receive Zach now to be your husband? And do you promise to develop this relationship during this marriage? I accept you, Kelsey. I accept you, Kelsey. As a person to be my wife. As a person to be my wife. With your strengths. With your strengths. And with your weakness. And with your weaknesses. To be loyal to you in health or illness. Loyal to you in health or illness. To share what I have and who I am. To share what I have and who I am. To love enough to risk being hurt. To love enough to risk being hurt. To trust when I misunderstand. <laughs> To weep with you in sorrow. To weep with you in sorrow. To celebrate with you in joy. To celebrate with you in joy. And to create life with you in river. To create life with you in river. I accept you, Jack. I'm Zach. <laughs> As a person to be my husband. As a person to be my husband. With your strength. <laughs> and with your weakness. <laughs> to be loyal to you and help her own. <laughs> to share what I have and who I am. To love enough to risk being hurt. To trust when I misunderstand. To weep with you in sorrow. To celebrate with you in joy. To celebrate with you in joy. And to create life with you in river. To create life with you in
captured the ring, which Zach places on his finger. It's like rings fashioned many centuries ago in the form of a circle. Made of precious metal, signifying the quality of your marriage. It's made for eternity by the hand of God. And this ring has no end. So there's love that Zach has for you. Zach has for you. This ring I give you in faith. And pledge of our constant love. And last is the boat. Zach, the ring of Kelsey places on your finger is a token of her sincere love for you. This ring is gold, the metal most precious, and looks like it's a tarnish. This symbol of value is, is an outward visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. Kelsey, repeat after me. This ring I give you in faith, and pledge of our constant love, and lasting devotion. Facing. Zach, Kelsey, because you have exchanged sacred vows, because you have given rings as symbols of your commitment to Christian marriage, it's my privilege to pronounce that from this day forth, in the sight of both God and man, and my husband and wife, what God, what, uh, God has joined together, but no more person. Zach, you may have to surprise me. Ladies and gentlemen, Zach and Kelsey Lee.